Well, welcome and good evening. I have to say that every one of our tribute dinners is very special to me. But tonight is a very unique moment. As Dan said, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary. And I have to say, never in our wildest dreams did George Ingram or any of our founding members believe that this would be the site. Think about the year. It was 1995. That decade, on one end, the collapse of the Cold War. On the other end, the horrific tragedy of 9-11. And in between, isolationism was on the rise. Now, I can remember members of Congress going to the House floor and bragging that they didn't own a passport. So a small yet mighty group gathered together to try to stop the attacks on foreign assistance. Could we galvanize the voices who cared that America should be engaged in the world, that actually believed that the international affairs budget mattered. So we started to build and grow. The NGO community, the faith-based community, development professionals. When the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee wanted to dismantle USAID, we decided to have our first big event. So we partnered with the Chamber of Commerce and we invited our keynote speaker, the First Lady, Hillary Clinton. Now the night before the event, the Chamber of Commerce said, you can bring over your signage for the stage. Of course, we didn't have any signage. So all night we put something together and I laugh now as I think about our first cardboard logo sign. <laughs> but that partnership with the Chamber of Commerce and the business community is now very much part of our DNA. I smiled when the Washington Post dubbed us the Strange Bedfellow Coalition. Fast forward 20 years later, and why I don't think we're all very strange, I'm proud of how wildly diverse our broad coalition is. Our bi bipartisan advisory council was launched at our very first tribute dinner in 2004 when we honored Colin Powell, then Secretary of State, and ever since, every living former Secretary of State has joined along as well. Over the years, we have hosted Bob and Bill Gates. We have paid tribute to Secretaries Rice, Clinton, Ridge, and Albright. We have had the privilege of sharing the stage with a president and a vice president. We have honored senators and representatives, including Kay Granger, who's here with us tonight, from both sides of the aisle and we couldn't be more thrilled to add two more outstanding leaders to that roster. Welcome Senator Corker and Senator Coons. Now, my personal highlight was of course sharing the stage with Grover from Sesame Street. But my greatest privilege is walking the halls of Congress with our military heroes. We now have 160 three and four star generals and admirals, along with 30,000 veterans for smart power that have joined our mission. But you all know that all politics is local. And so over the years, we began to travel outside of the Beltway and we went state by state by state. I remember one of our first events. 
I went to Charleston, South Carolina with a relatively new member of the State Foreign Operations Subcommittee named Lindsey Graham. We had our first event with the Citadel Military Academy and hundreds of constituents came, not just to hear the senator, but we also had a pastor, a general, and a business leader. That was smart power. And I have to tell you, we've had similar events throughout the country. But a funny thing happened on the way to becoming 20. A billion people have, on this planet have been lifted out of extreme poverty. Six million fewer children die today every year from preventable diseases. Millions of girls go to school. Eight million people have been saved by PEPFAR. Democracy, although not perfect in this world, is the norm. And bipartisan American leadership has been a powerful part of that change. Now, all of you know that there are still millions of people left behind. And you also know that, sadly, isolationism is once again around and here. And so our work is not yet complete, and our story must continue. Just a month ago, I was in Arusha, Tanzania, and I saw a light. It was dark the night I saw it. Just like most rural villages are in a country that two-thirds of the population do not have access to reliable electricity. But I met Emmanuel, and Emmanuel brought me into his very modest home to show me his light bulb. It was a single light bulb on a ceiling, powered from a solar panel, powered from Power Africa, an American initiative. And Emmanuel hugged his children, and he told me, my son and my daughter, they can now study at night and do their homework. They have hope, and they have a future. I am very, very proud of the remarkable journey of our last 20 years, but I absolutely know the challenges ahead. But when I look around this room, I know there are government officials, there are private sector and, and, and nonprofit leaders that are trying to do their best and working hard to make the world a better and safer place every day. And for that, I know that our future is bright.